Hello everyone and welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Renz and today we are going to break down the alchemical equation to creation and its return trip back. Now first I want to thank everyone who subscribes to the channel. If you're finding us for the very first time then please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so that you get notifications for all our videos and lives. Now before we go any further, I definitely want to give gratitude to everyone who participate as a Patreon of the channel. Thank you so very much for becoming a patron. I greatly appreciate uh, your financial um, gift every month. So, with that being said, and everyone who supports this channel through Uncle Ren's Popcorn, let me make sure I don't forget that part, especially since that's my primary business, is Uncle Ren's Popcorn. Uh, Today we're going to talk about the alchemical equation for creation. Now a couple of videos back I discussed, and I may throw it up here at the end, a link to that one in the end, I discussed where the soul comes from, how the soul and the spirit and the body correlate one to one another, what we are, how we have been created. Well today we're going to look at that alchemical equation of creation and our return trip back. It is fairly simple. In initial thought process but it can be complex in actually putting it into practice now for those who are asking what is alchemy I talked about this on my video alchemy 101 many people think that alchemy is the process of turning lead into gold those of a higher understanding may say that it is the ability to turn a thought into lead from from lead to gold to increase the vibration of your thought to purify your thoughts but in truth, alchemy at the higher level is the ability to practice the hermetic principles on a daily basis, both on all three levels, on the level of the body, the level of the spirit, and the level of consciousness, to practice alchemy, the hermetic principles on all three levels. This is why Hermes is called Hermes Tresmegistus, thrice crowned, thrice great, three times, because alchemy, hermetic laws, and alchemy was practiced. The alchemy of the hermetic laws was practiced on all three levels of the physical, the spiritual, and the conscious or the God conscious level. So we're going to look at that for a minute today. Now the base, the formula for creation in alchemy is father's moon, father's son plus moon mother equals the soul. Now, before we go any further, let me explain. When we speak of the sun and the moon, it is the archetype of what the sun and the moon represents to us on this physical level. What has happened throughout history is that when these archetypes have been brought to the masses of people, it is then confused by the people or it is impressed upon the people by those who desire power for the people to worship the sun, to worship the moon. And I as the priest, if you give to me, if you obey me, I as the king, if you give to me, if you obey me, if you die for me, then I will cause the sun to rise every day. I will cause the moon to go through its cycle every month. I will give you the light. I will do my practices because I'm closer to the creator than you and I will manifest the light and people begin to worship the priest worship the king worship the queen worship the man worship the woman worship the doctrine worship the sun itself or the moon and begin to uh, eliminate their ability to make that return trip and we'll get into that uh, later but they eliminate their ability to make that return trip simply because they become they become confused or controlled at this point and it does not matter what your religion is at some point doctrines have been put in place in order to control whether it is the father mother sun moon or it is changed around to fit your current religious format so in knowing that we must understand what these are alchemically in order for us to move forward and to make that return trip to God consciousness so the father's son represents masculine energy. And when the father's son representing the masculine energy 
come together with the mother moon. The sun is used because it is the life giver, a bringer of tremendous light. It lights up the day. It is the one that is needed in order for life to flourish here. It provides the instruction. It is the seed, the sperm, looking for the egg. And the seed, the sperm, carrying the information for the egg to then nurture and produce. These were the alchemical mindsets that were in place that was going on. The mother moon is representing the feminine energy. The feminine energy. And this feminine energy, because the moon is a reflection of the light of the sun, the, because the moon uh, dictates the movement of the waters on the planet, that archetype is used in the same way as the the womb of the woman having the fluids in order to take the knowledge, the information or the womb, the, 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 the water of the cell, the egg that takes in the information from the sperm and then begins the nurturing process, begins the process. So the feminine energy of the mother moon combined with the masculine energy of the father creates the soul. The soul is then mind and consciousness the god consciousness is where the soul is is established the hermetic laws says that for those who want to take away and say there is only father the hermetics teach that it takes gender in order for any and all creations to happen we have the hermetic law of mentalism that all is mine and that the all is mine well it still takes within the all gender of male and female in order to manifest anything so in order for creation to happen we had to have both some have taken this to say that god is a hermaphrodite that the hermaphrodite god or that the first creations of man were hermaphrodites in order to understand or to grasp the idea of the masculine and the feminine together some have taken it and utilized and the words of the elohim meaning both masculine and feminine, gods as plural. Uh, in the Prior to the release from Babylonian captivity, the Hebrews as well as all Persians said Yahweh and Asherah, which is Yahweh's wife, Yahweh and Asherah. And you'll still see where it says Yahweh and his Asherah, Asherah being the mother goddess of creation. So this is not new. This is old. This is something that's been around. So in understanding that, the two come together to form the masculine, I mean, form the soul, the force. And that force is present. That force is consciousness. But then that force needs nurturing, requires nurturing, requires an action. And that action becomes the father, the father, mother, moon, plus the womb slash wind. Remember, it's the archetype of the wind. You have heard, and then God blew or breathed breath into man. If you look at the actual Hebraic writings in the Hebrew Bible in Genesis, that first chapter says that for, there was darkness and then there was light. And when it says that God face was over the water if you actually actually look up the wording and do the etymology on that 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 paragraph that verse it actually says that god it was god's wind a breath that fluttered over the water that same breath that breathed into the nostril of man uh, in the hindu tradition it is the breath of god that gives life to the clay man it is always a wind it is, it is the wind is always the archetype of the nurturing spirit, the actionable spirit that moves into the body, that moves into taking it from consciousness into an active vibration, an active frequency. Frequency. This is the spirit. The spirit is the act of thinking. When you have an idea in your mind, you just have an idea. 
But then as you contemplate it and contemplate it and contemplate it and begin to think about it and think about it and think about it, and then you say it's a blessing, you say it's serendipitous that you start to see it, it starts to manifest, opportunities start to come your way, your thinking is putting out the right vibrational frequency in order for you to move in a way that can manifest whatever it is. Now, in the Emerald Tablets, it is talked about as the womb because man understands that when birth happens, the creation of a child, that it happens in the womb of the woman, where again, the baby is developed and nurtured in the water. So it is also part of the feminine energy of nurturing, of making it become whatever it is designed to become, whatever that conscious thought was. And then from the womb, we get to what was called the earth and the breast. It is said it is the earth because it is the physical manifestation and that the earth will nurture and feed what is called the body. So we have the soul, the spirit, and the body. And the earth will nurture it, it will manifest it. It will allow for the soul to exist as a spirit inside of the shell of a body in this material world. Did you catch that? It allows for the soul to exist as a spirit inside of the body in the physical form of our level of matter. It is the created form, the physical matter that we exist on right now. And with this, the soul has come to dwell in the body. The body wasn't, the soul, the spirit wasn't created for the body or by the body, but the body was created in order for the soul spirit, the soul to live as a spirit in the body in this physical understanding. And it is fed by the earth. It is nurtured by the earth. It is a place of living for the earth. Just as a, a baby comes out of the womb of the mother, it is now in a place where it can now exist. And for that existence, it has but one duty, and that duty is the return trip back to the soul, to live based on the soul that was placed inside by the spirit. How do we do that? How do we come to this self-actualization? Well, the way we do that is that while in the body, we make the return trip first by gaining knowledge and understanding. You see, this world, although it works in perfect order, everything on the planet works in perfect order. Everything in the universe works in perfect order. Everything follows the hermetic teachings of mentalism, correspondence, as above, so below. It follows the teachings and the understanding of vibration, and of frequency. It follows the understanding of cause and effect and rhythm. It follows the understanding and, the, and the, the, the philosophy, the principles, the laws of gender. It follows these hermetic laws. The tree grows based on the hermetic laws. The lion exists and hunts and lives and procreates based on the hermetic laws. The birds fly north and south and exist and live and build nests based on the hermetic laws. Everything flows according to the laws of nature except man. Except the one being that was supposedly, and as said, and I do agree with, created in the image of the all. In that we have the faculties of the all that the other animals and beasts and plants and elemental do not have. They do not have it, but we do, because we have the ability to have consciousness. And we have that because the soul resides in our body. We have the ability to manifest the frequency, increase the vibration or decrease the vibration. We have the spirit. So we have what is necessary in the body to manifest and get to God consciousness. So. Until, that, until we come to that realization, we exist in this world that is orderly, but we exist in the chaos of ignorance. 
when we choose to ignore all the hermetic laws and not live that way, when we choose to live by doctrine, when we choose to live by the conditions and cultures of man, we are choosing to live in chaos of ignorance of this universal situation, the laws that were created, the universal laws that function. So in order for us to do this, to move from the body to the spirit, we have to first gain knowledge and understanding. We must look deeper beyond what we have been taught. Go deep into the mysteries. Understand things at a level beyond what you have been taught. To dig deeper. To say, if I don't know the author of the writing, I don't know what I'm reading. If I don't know the history of the writing, I do not know what I'm reading. If I don't know the culture and the political environment that it was written in, I do not know what I'm reading. A hundred years from now, if ten people wrote about Trump, Depending upon those 10 people, you will get a different variation, a different version of Trump and walk away 100 years from now with a different perspective than the reality. 100 years from now, 10 people will write about Obama and 10 people will give a different understanding concerning Obama based on the different variations of writings today concerning Obama. This is the same that you must take, the same mindset you must take into reading whatever book you read, whatever philosophy you follow, whatever understanding you think that you may have, and question it. It is the difference between getting a PhD and getting a bachelor's. A bachelor's is designed for you to follow and tote the line of what was already dictated. A PhD is for you to challenge everything that you were taught get your PhD in the body so that you can have the power to increase your vibration and move into the spirit. Now once you get into the spirit, you then begin to live based on wisdom and love. You see that power that just has wisdom without love is reckless, is uh, something that will corrupt you. We see that all the time. People who have knowledge and they have understanding, they take that and they utilize that power and walk in a wisdom without love and we see the destruction that they cause, that they create. So we cannot walk that way. We see our Jim Joneses who do this in a religious environment. We see our Adolf Hitlers who do this in a political environment. We can see how people have done this in business time and time again. We see slave trades throughout all of history and even currently today. We see people who have knowledge of the law. They have understanding of the law, but they implement that wisdom and people like Jonathan Price is murdered because they do not walk in the wisdom of love. When you do, you find the liberation from this earthly attachment, the liberation from the body. You start to recognize that life is only found from within because you must love yourself and then love others exactly how you would love yourself. When you do that, you start to walk liberated from the confines of the body. You begin to see things differently. Your third eye opens and you're not afraid. You don't live by fear. You don't live by shame or guilt. You do not live because you are trying to hold on to a love that is damaging to you and not realizing you can let it go and love will come back again. You continue to tell yourself lies about who you are and how we are all disconnected but not realizing that we are all connected, one people. Your third eye becomes calcified. You cannot see the vision of the creator. You cannot see the vision of the created. You only see the blinders that have been placed on you and never do you take them down. And you hold on to the body. You hold on to the body. You fear death. You fear death. No one who holding on to the body ever fears death because you know that death is a transition from one existence to the next existence. Only when you have liberated yourself, liberated your mind, liberated your spirit from the body, can you get into 
actualization, get into the soul, walk into the light, then you achieve God consciousness. This is when you gain the Buddha head. This is when you gain the Christ mind. This is when you reach Nirvana, Samadhi, is when you come into the light. And the only way you can come into the light is to come from the body. You see, the body being in darkness and chaos, light cannot know itself unless it has a reference point from the darkness, from the body. The soul, and this is the reason for the whole process, the soul cannot come to self-actualization without first going through the darkness and the chaos of the body and moving into liberation into the light. If the soul was born into the light, then the soul would never know itself. It would be as if a candle, a light, came to burn, came to shine while sitting in the sun, in the light of the sun. If a candle was lit in the light of the sun, the candle would never see its own light and come to actualization, self-actualization. It would only come to light. It can only come to light by first being surrounded by darkness. That is why your books say, in the beginning there was chaos, in the beginning there was darkness, and then a voice called out, a sound, a vibration, said, let there be light. A big bang happens. That is the perp that is the archetype, that is the idea to which you are given the instructions. But we have been blinded, covered in a veil, by those who would rather control you and who seek power over you. I seek to liberate you. I seek to help you to move by whatever methodology you choose, whatever vehicle. I could drive a Lamborghini. You could drive a Ferrari. If we're both going up I-75 North, we're still headed in the same direction. It doesn't matter the vehicle. What matters is the openness of mind, the alchemical thoughts process and coming into the spirit from the body and from the spirit to the soul into the light so that your soul understands and knows itself self actualization that's the process that's the journey and we need to enjoy the journey love the journey and walk in that wisdom of love so I hope you guys understand this Watch this video over and over again until you do. Once you fully gain this, you are moving dra dramatically into having the alchemical mindset. You are moving in a way that will give you freedom, that will be able to allow you to manifest every aspect of life that you choose. And when you're living this way, especially in love, you will recognize that some of the things that you think now you want to manifest it really doesn't matter. It's really not your real. It's not your real self-accusation. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations, good journey.